Today, we're going to talk about 10 foods that you must avoid if you want to have super, super health. <laughs> Boy, get that one out. Yeah. You know, food is such a, it's such an emotional topic. I mean, there's so much emotional intensity about it. And there's a lot of things out there about do this diet or do this diet. But whatever diet you're selecting, what we can say is there's an incredible amount of evidence of these foods that you must avoid. So we're going to go to the 10 foods to avoid. That's what we're looking at. Like nobody, nobody in whatever their methodology is uh, are in this. And I'll give you a little tip that I learned a long time ago. Naturally, I got kind of, when I first started out, I was very locked into one way of doing things. And over the years and thanks to the exposure to both my team members and other athletes and other medical doctors is we're always learning. So stay flexible and stay open and start learning from a variety of things. And one of the things that, I, that, that changed my whole perspective in health was when I started to incorporate commonality. So instead of looking at the differences between different diet strategies or food strategies or, or practices or people who were you know, preaching a certain doctrine, I looked at what were the similarities. And one thing we can find is there's a lot of similarities here on food you can avoid. The first one that you want to avoid at all costs is burnt food. Burnt food is horrible for your body. Um, there's lots of research on this. You can check it out on, on the effects of burnt food long term in your health. Cooked food is not the best for us, okay? I mean, I'm not here to slam cooked food, but we know that it's enzyme deficient. Burnt food just creates a whole cascade of problems inside your body that you do not want to deal with. So avoid burnt food. So if you're cooking your meats or whatever, and you know, people like want to burn them and everything, Try and avoid that and definitely stay away from cooking the marshmallows on the fire. I know it's kind of the thing in camp and I did it and stuff, but you, you know, they like burn it all. Don't do that. That's not so good for you. Next thing we're going to go to is dyed food. Food that has colorings and agents, dyed foods. One of the interesting things is if you look at under a microscope, but when they take fat cells off people, they look at liposuction. What we find in there is dyes. We find a few more things we're going to talk about, but we find dyes. Your body just isn't designed to take these dyes out of, out of the food. And of course, we all know that certain times they have to put dyes inside our body if you're doing you know, various medical tests so they can see this on x-rays or MRIs or these type of things. But you want to get the dye out of your system, dye food. And also, I dealt with a lot of people in the hair industry, stylists that use a lot of dyes and stuff that get absorbed into their skin. And a lot of them have a variety of problems that we have to overcome. If you're one of those people, we can do that with the biological optimization program, the BioStack. So ask about us, you know, email us on our website, and we'll share with you what you can do. The next thing you want to uh, uh, avoid, that's what we are, avoid, is preservatives. Preservatives, these things, boy, man, I mean, in nature, everything kind of erodes or oxidizes or, or breaks down. And digestion is a form of controlled rotting, if you will, or con controlled oxidization inside your stomach. It's accelerated with the stomach acids and enzymes and probiotics, and we need that in order to assimilate our foods. When you put preservatives on things, this slows down the process. It also interacts with our bacteria cultures and can throw off that terrain we talked about in the last lesson. This is a very, very big problem. So any of those things that you can't spell, and, and, and one thing I want to be clear about is if you're looking at uh, you know, supplements and nutrients and these things, get away from the ones that have the things like magnesium stearate and all these different chemicals. If you can't pronounce it, probably not that good for you, okay? Most preservatives are that sort of thing, you know, sodium-based or that sort of stuff. So avoid those because we'll find those. Again, remember those people who found the fat cells, took them out of the body, looked at them, had the dyes, guess what else we found in there? Preservatives. You know, and uh, Dr. Horst Filch is a vascular surgeon. He told me, wait, you definitely want to avoid preservatives if you can. The, th the, the, the fourth one is GMOs. You know, genetically modified organisms, genetically modified foods. Okay, so that's, you know, genetically modified, just so you understand that. This is a huge topic of debate 
in the world today. And we talk about how to identify genetically modified foods in an upcoming lesson about your PLO, PLU codes on foods if you're at the store, because sometimes, I know in Canada, we don't have the right to know if we've got genetically modified food. And this is a very, very touchy subject. Um, there's a lot of money going into genetic modified foods right now, but what we do know is this. There's a recent study that came out that demonstrated, a, I think it was a Princeton University or some one of the Ivy League schools, he had his son eat um, nothing but McDonald's, which was a high level of genetically modified foods inside of that food. So they make it taste things, they can make it do things, they make it look at different colors. That's why genetic modification is so popular from a marketing perspective. But he took all that food into something, and after 10 days, guess what happened? You remember we talked about the 500 strains of probiotics in the last lesson? Well, he had 40% less probiotics inside of good bacteria in his body or strains inside his body than he had before the 10 days of nothing but genetically modified food. So, and they've also showed that uh, a lot of chemicals and stuff can you know, take away or alter how the gut bacteria works. And that is a critical problem what people contribute to obesity and a variety of diseases and infection and things like that. Okay, the next thing we want to look at is, you know, hydrogenated fats. So when I was a kid, I remember they came out with, you know, they, they've had all these things that said, oh, well, there's these, you know, uh, butter's bad for you. And then you know, we want to go to margarine. Margarine was had hydrogens, and hydrogenate it means that on the on the fat chain they just add all these hydrogen, and it, and it allows it to preserve longer. It changes the flavor and stuff like this. But hydrogenated fats inside your body they contribute to a variety of conditions: obesity, heart disease, degeneration, excessive uh, aging, and oxidization inside the body. You want to get these babies totally out of your diet. Anything that says hydrogenated or hydrogenized, so hydrogenized fats, hydrogenized foods, right? Stay away from those, okay? Not good, not good at all. Another thing is, is you want to stay away from what we call simple sugars, particularly those found in sodas, right? Sodas with an S. <laughs> there we go. Again, I apologize for my writing. Simple sugars are a real problem. First and foremost, they taste good. They're very addictive. I know that Coca-Cola, and not to take any, you know, take any shots at them, but they created a product that had no satiety index. In other words, you can drink as many as you want, and there's nothing in your brain that tells you to stop drinking this food. And with simple sugars, our, since our brain uses mostly sugar, what happens is it converts and goes into our brain very quickly, and there's a benefit. And our brain always wants energy. It always wants food. food. And what happens is we start getting hooked on sugars, and this leads to diabetes and weight gain, uh, can cause mood disorders. If you talk to Dr. Hawkins and what they did with uh, psychoanalytical research, and they found that people that had high sugar diets had more incidence of you know, schizophrenia and things like that, and they changed their sugar, and 25% of her, his clients were uh, corrected just from eliminating sugar, simple sugars from their diet. So what are simple sugars? Things like, you know, um, Glucose is a big one. Anything that has corn syrup, um, those things. So there's like high fructose, which is a corn syrup derivative. Regular fructose is okay, like fru fructose that you find in an apple or in an orange in its natural state, it's fine. Fructose that's used inside of chocolate bars and candies and things like that, that's the kind of sugars that, the, the, or the high fructose that you want to avoid because of all the negative side effects, especially from obesity and heart disease and these type of things. Also for mood behaviors, and a lot of kids get really strung out when they're doing sugars. You know, we all know that you give a kid sugar and he's wound up running all over the place because it's like a neurotoxin for their body. So sports drinks, a lot of sports drinks, believe it or not, have that in energy drinks. So I have a big pet peeve about sodas, energy drinks, and sports drinks because you know, with liquids, you get more faster. The, the digestive it goes into the stream faster. These are a real problem, and I didn't know this when I was young. Um, here's another one we got to look at. That's alcohol. Um, a lot of people, I'm going to get some flack on this because I know a lot of people like to have a few drinks. I mean, the reality is, is of all the drugs that have been out there, and we can put, you know, we'll put this on top of, you know, drugs as another side point because it is a drug. Alcohol and drugs. I mean, the reality is, is these things 
uh, can be used in certain areas, but really for the most part, they are just a gateway into a whole lot of problems. And alcohol, you look at the history, has caused more challenges than any other drug in the world, and it's legal. <laughs> That's the funny part, it's legal, obviously, you need to be of age to drink it or whatever, but this has caused a lot of problems and most people have been influenced, their lives have been you know, hurt or damaged because of the effects of abuse of alcohol and drugs, okay? And the other thing is, is another one we want to look at is, pes uh, on top of drugs, I'm going to put prescription drugs. I want to, I want to, digress here for a second. Prescription drugs are great for dealing with a certain situation for a point. It's, it's, if you look at the physician's death reference guide, and the, you know, drugs are made to treat the symptoms. It doesn't treat the causes. It's to alleviate the symptoms. So if you're on prescription drugs or you're using prescription drugs, please recognize that these, over the long term, have horrible side effects, and there's some great websites out there. I think one's a renegade pharmacist and talks about the long-term effects of using drugs. It's a great site. Um, but also, almost every medical person will understand that you get what's called contraindications. Other drugs can lead to other drugs, and you take a prescription drug for a period of time, then you, next, then you need another one to treat the side effects from that and that one, and all of a sudden you're on 10, 15 different medications that are all interacting and creating a, a cocktail that can be very damaging. I'm not here to say that you know, drugs aren't something that are needed or used in certain areas under the medical supervision, but outside of that, things kind of go sideways. Now we're going to talk about another one that you really, really want to avoid, and that is pesticides. pesticides. And you can also put on this, you know, fungicides and herbicides. Fungicides, herbicides, pesticides, these type of things. Basically, these cause, you know, how they work is this. Uh, you, they spray vegetables with a pesticide because what it does is it kills the bugs. And how it kills the bugs it interrupts the enzyme activity of the bug. Remember we talked about in an early lesson, enzymes are important from everything from thinking to blinking. Well, these pesticides actually kill the enzymes in your body. They destroy enzymes in your body. They also destroy bacteria inside the body as well. So pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides, these things do a variety of damage. We also find those stored in fat cells of people that take liposuction out. So. Um, if you're buying conventional food, and conventionally grown food has herbicides, pesticides, and fungicides, and probably 25% of organics, that's about an estimation, have been sprayed with this stuff. These things are causing huge, huge problems in the population long term, because let's face it, okay, it's enough pesticides to kill a little bug, but how much of that do I need before it kills me? So, you know, ways to deal around with that is deal local, buy local uh, foods, or in your organic markets, and that sort of thing. But on the next level is, you know, one of the things that I use is I have a water machine that um, washes my vegetables with a specific type of water that will emulsify oil because those have oil-based pesticides. We'll talk about that in an upcoming lesson. But you want to get to this. And 10, um, I was going to say here's, there's trans fats, which is another hydrating fat, like things that you find in the deep fat fryer. But 10 is going to be anything that makes you feel bad. And people go, what do you mean? Anything that makes you feel bad. And Tim saying, well, the reality is this is the whole idea of this program is for you to eventually become the master authority on your own health. You have an incredible brain and an incredible body. All of the scientists in the world, all of the engineering in the world aren't able to duplicate that. You have a... You, you have a, a process of observing yourself. So what I would recommend is when you do that little journal we talked about tracking, is go over the day and see how your energy worked. Check your food, uh, after your food, before you ate, after you ate. Did you wake up in the morning groggy? Did you find that you ha had uh, more irritable relationships uh, with people in your environment, that you know, had challenges? Did you have concentration problems? Did you find that you felt bloated or tired after any food? These are what's called biofeedback indicators. And we talk about this in some of the other lessons about how to monitor yourself. But really get clear about foods that make you feel bad, that 
you don't feel good on. And sometimes you'll take a product that makes you feel good for like 30 minutes, like maybe sugar or caffeine. You get a little rush, but then you notice a couple hours later you get a crash and you got to reach for it. Rest assured, and I'm going to refer to you a book. There's a, a book called uh, Salt, Fat, Sugar by Michael Moss. I highly, highly recommend this book, Salt, Fat, Sugar by Michael Moss. And it talks about how modern food manufacturers are you know, using genetic manipulation to kind of hook you on all of these things, to get inside your brain and start making you want more and more of their product and staying addicted to it, even though that you might be feeling bad. So to understand this, I think it's a great book to, to refer to and read. So just by knowing what's going on, you become much more aware and you start to trust your own judgment. And that's what we hope for you to do today. So um, there's the top 10 things to avoid. All of those things, you know, make a list of them. Look at your lifestyle and say, hey, let's just take one of these and knock it off or at least reduce it. I mean, I'm not saying that everybody's going to stop drinking or, you know, having a glass of wine here and there, but maybe slow it down. Maybe cut out some sodas out of your diet or look on the cereal box and say, you know what, instead of having a sugary cereal, I'm going to have a nice protein shake, okay? Instead of, you know, having burnt food, I'm going to have a salad instead or these type of things. And if any have those weird colors on it, stay away from those. So I hope today's lesson was a little bit of clue, a little bit of you know, give you a few clues or hints of things that you want to avoid. And again, always be sure to trust your own judgment, be an authority for yourself. That's a big part of this process because when you get to the end of this, you're going to have a working knowledge and an experience-based experience reality that's going to allow you to really have a lot of confidence about the foods that you select and how they make you feel. So we'll see you tomorrow on the next lesson coming right up. Happy to have you along. Stay with it.